So before I start the class, let me recap what we discussed yesterday. So let's briefly discuss what we have discussed yesterday. <clears throat> So yesterday we started um, about FI and SD integration. So what all we did yesterday? So we'll talk a couple of minutes just to recap what we did yesterday. And then we will talk today. First and foremost, yesterday we did one exercise um, from the customer master perspective. So we learned how to create a customer. So we created a new customer. We posted an invite for that customer. So that also we did. <clears throat> okay. Then um, we also extended the Customer, how do we uh, extend uh, customer and uh, what we need to do to extend the customer? We maintain the customer, we extend the customer, we change the customer, we block the customer, and um, because we can block the customer if in case there is some kind of um, temporary hold, their kind of uh, issues, and there is some problems. So in those kind of cases, we can block and unblock the customers. So we did that exercise as well. Okay. Today, we will be talking about another master data which is important in the finance perspective and the sales perspective that master data is called credit master in uh, industry most of companies use credit management it's specifically because sap being used in a lot of b2b environment therefore credit management is very important in b2b environment obviously you will not like to do business with a company with whom you don't have a proper credit okay. so that is what this comes into the picture So that is what we will be talking about as far as the credit management is concerned. So the credit management credit is uh, set up as the master data. We will be setting up that credit master data, how the credit master data is being set up. And the credit master data is set up for a customer. So before you can set up the credit, you need to have you need to have a customer master. That is why we have created customer master. Yesterday we spent a lot of time discussing and talking about customer master. In the customer master, we talked about we can we will also be discussing something called credit control area. Credit control area is organization unit which is responsible for performing credit functions. And uh, <clears throat> that is what we will be talking about, what is the credit control area, how it is being assigned, etc. 
The second part we will be discussing, and there are several other configurations also, which is uh, relevant from the perspective of credit, which is important from the perspective of the credit. So that is also we would be talking about. And then how the credit control happens. Credit control basically means when you're carrying out a sales transaction, if credit of the customer is exceeded, if the credit of customer is failed, in those cases, we can use credit management. <clears throat> in those cases, we can function, we can work on the credit management. <clears throat> that is where the credit management come into the picture. Now the first and foremost, there is something called credit control area. Now what is credit control area? <clears throat> so we have a credit control area. Credit control area is organization unit make a note which is responsible for for performing credit functions for example like a credit department like a credit department So that credit department is called in SAP credit control area, is an organization unit. <clears throat> like we talked about company core, like we talked about business area in the FI and MM integration, we talk about purchase organization. <clears throat> Similar to that, Credit control area is the organization unit which is responsible for performing credit functions. <clears throat> okay. So we will be talking about credit control area from that perspective. Is the organized unit which is responsible for performing credit functions. Now, if you see here, you have a different credit area. You know? So, like in US, one credit area, you have another credit area, you have another credit area. So, in your company, you can have a different credit area okay. now where this uh, where this is being assigned so credit control area credit control area is assigned to company code. So in company code and credit control area, there is the assignment and there is a link. That is what you see here. The 
one credit control area credit control area can be assigned to one or more than one company code so company code a credit control area is assigned to company code and it is also possible that one credit area can be assigned to multiple company code also so there is a centralized credit control area make a note in this case more than one company code more than one company code is assigned to one credit control area Okay, make a note of that. then is decentralized credit control area in this case one company code is assigned with one credit control area yeah. make a note of this Now, if you look at this picture, now here we have a Mexico. In case of Mexico, company code assigned to so one to one. See that one company code, one company code, one credit control area. In Japan, one company code, one credit area, one to one. This is example. of decentralized now if you see in europe this is europe 1000 credit control area is also assigned to uk is also assigned to germany it also assigned to france is also assigned to portugal is also assigned to spain so 
that is why we can have a this is example of a decentralized now in case of us and canada us and canada are assigned to one credit control area so we have a credit control area 3000 assigned to assigned to 3000 and the 4000 so that is an example of how the credit control area can be defined now where they are in the configuration so now we go to configuration so for the configuration we go to spro so we go to customizing img implementation guide and spro spro is the transaction code for doing any configuration in sap as we discussed before so spr then we go to sap reference img this is all configuration where we have okay. now we have here enterprise structure okay so this is the enterprise structure and then we go to definition financial accounting and here we have a defined credit control area so that is where the credit control area can be defined so that is the credit control area okay. so we have credit control area and these are so many credit control area defined you know you can define your own so it doesn't make a difference so this is the one credit control area for example 1000 And this credit control area is assigned to currency. This works into this currency euro. Updating this basically means uh, if you want to update the reports, K4 is a fiscal year variant, which fiscal year variant we follow. Then you can also default different risk categories, credit limit representative group the risk category basically means how what is the category of this customer from the risk perspective so based upon our understanding we can define high medium low and all that now if you see that this uh, these fields are blank now why these fields are blank these fields the like credit risk uh, category Trade limit, representative group, they are empty here. And why they are empty? Because these fields are automatically filled, no, not used from here. So when we create a credit master, at that time, we assign the risk category and credit limit and representative group. Because every customer, might have a different risk category some could be high some could be medium some very high some very low so risk category obviously could be different based upon each customer so normally people don't define it but if you want to default you can define default we will be defining and these risk category credit limit representative group when we are defining credit master data so when we're defining the credit master data at that time to that customer based upon his risk profile we will be defining risk category okay 
So now we go back. So this is the risk credit control area. Then we go back to the assignment. And if you go back in assignment, then uh, here we have assign company code to credit control area. Because in the company code and the credit control area, there is a relationship. Both has to be assigned to each other. Now, we also talked about the relationship between credit control area and company code could be one to one or it could be one to many. So it could be one to one or it could be one to many. What is the, so is the centralized credit control or decentralized credit control? So you can do both, which basically means one company is assigned to only one or one company, one credit control is assigned to multiple company codes. So we can have two models, both models. So here we go to assign company code to credit control area. So now if you go here, then uh, we have a company code 1000 and company code 1000 is linked to credit control area 1000. Now, if you see that 1000 is also linked to other company code also. So that basically means you can always assign one credit control area to more than one company code as possible. And we go back. So that is where we have assignment. Can one company code have a multiple credit control area? Why will you do that? Now, another thing which you do is a credit master record. So we can have a master data that is called credit master data. So like we have a customer master data as we created yesterday, we will also create a credit master data as well. Now, in the credit master data, so the very first thing is we have something called customer master record. So, customer master record is mandatory. I told you before also. So, if we say that here, before we sending the customer master data, we need to have a customer master, which we did yesterday, and we will also create customer master today also. So, you have to have it customer master now for every relevant customer master we can define a credit master data there are two different separate master data so customer master data is separate and credit master data is separate okay so that is where we can define different master data now in the credit master data we can have overview, we can have a general data, and we'll see what is general data. And then in the same customer, you, you have a data related to credit. So how does this data is being maintained? We're gonna do this exercise. We will be creating a credit master data Shakti. Okay, before we do that, I also wanted to check some additional configuration. 
we i want to check some additional configuration which is there in the finance and they there are also certain configuration which is also there in sd so we will be looking at those configurations first so if i go back uh, to financial accounting account receivable and account payable and then here we have a configuration related to credit management so this is the configuration related to credit management so here we have a financial accounting account receivable and account payable and here we have a credit management so this is the menu path for credit management and that is where the credit management is defined now if i go to credit management here so there are some configurations so first and foremost here we have a uh, assigned a permitted uh, credit control area so we also saw that uh, company code and credit control area has to be defined so we already seen that a couple of things which is important one is here called group defined groups now if you see that a grouping basically there is a this is called a credit management group now credit management group is a subdivision of your customers from the credit perspective now that subdivision of the customer could be whatever way we wanted to subdivide those customers so if you look at it here my major customers small medium customers customers in europe customer in south america customer in asia customer in eastern europe so you can do the grouping of the customer based upon according to your credit demarcation is like a grouping of the customer from credit perspective now why will you do that so lot of people will do the categorization of the customers from the credit perspective so you know that okay how many major customers we have how many small medium customers we have how many customers in south america how many customers in asia how many customers in australia how many customers in eastern europe or whatever now this just an example obviously this demarcation of the customer could be whatever way it is necessary for us to divide our customer in whatever categorization we want to do okay so that is why it is called credit management group okay is a grouping of the customer for the credit regions then we have a defined risk categories now we talked about briefly before that we can have a risk category in the risk category we can have a customer with different type of risk now if you see here you have a low risk customer medium risk customer high risk customer so whatever way you want to define big you can categorize your customer risk categories the first part is the definition and the, of the risk categories second part is assigning those risk categories to the customer so how those risk categories has ever been can be assigned to a customer so two different things and uh, how do we assign the risk category to customer that is done in the credit master data 
credit master data we have not yet created we will be creating the credit master data so this is the risk category high risk low risk medium risk high super high risk whatever risk category we want to define again the risk category can be used for the purpose of defining configuration parameter and also defining for the reporting analytics so how many customers we have uh, which is high risk how many customers we have which are low risk okay so that is what we can do <coughs> now we have a something called defined credit representative group so that is also we can define so here we can define credit representative group so we go back here where we define credit representative group now credit representative group basically means what so we talked about we have a credit control area now credit control area is a like a credit department okay. so we talked about in organization hierarchy if you look at it that we can have credit <coughs> credit control area is like a credit department so we have a this is a credit department so we have a department now within the department we can have a credit representative groups so within the department we can have credit representative groups okay. now what is the meaning of this credit representative groups is okay. credit representative groups now credit represented so what can happen is in the one credit department i have a 10 credit representatives but those 10 credit representative which we have we can basically define those <coughs> in the credit in different grouping so that basically means your credit department and the people in the credit department are divided into different groups that is what this is about Okay. So is it grouping? Is grouping of credit representative? So in my credit department, I might have a different uh, credit representatives and. Uh, we can define those credit representative in SAP. Okay. That is what we have here credit representative group, group one, group two, group three, group four, whatever that we want to. Because I have 20 people and I can define those, I can segregate, I can put those 20 people into different groups. Now, those group would be okay, this is a group for. Uh, domestic customer this is a group for the foreign customer this is a group for the small customer this is a group for you know small customer so that grouping could be whatever way then below that we have a credit representative so then you can define credit representative so here we have credit represent group and then below that we have credit representative credit representative are the people we have credit
representative. So credit representative is the individual working okay so we have credit representative group okay so individuals so we see here so i have a representative 01 barbara i have a tom vendor so you can assign credit representative two different and they're their employee ids here you also see there's a partner function what do they say this kb and km yeah what is KB? KB is your credit partner function. KB is a credit representative. KM is a credit manager. So Barbara, it is a credit representative. Tom is a credit manager. So you can define different in individual employee ids to them just working you can up, you can assign employee ids names and the roles a role could be like a representative manager etc you can have as many roles as you want so you have a 20 representative and uh, each of this um, uh, each of these representatives may have their own role so assign employee id names Customer representative, rep, credit manager, credit manager, etc. Okay, so that is what you can define. Here. So these are some of the configuration which are there, which we can define. KB and KM. KB is a representative, KM is a manager. So that is what we saw here. Now there is some other configuration also. Now what is that configuration? So we exit out. We exit out. Nanji, you got our answer, right? So KB is a representative, KM is a manager. Now, KVKM is just an example. You can have many more roles. You have representative manager, senior manager. You can define as many partner functions are, are possible. So those partner functions are configurable. Yeah. It doesn't need to be two roles. It could be five roles. But based upon my organizational hierarchy, I have a credit manager, a general manager. I have a credit vice president. So we can have um, um, as many roles as possible. So although here, you see two roles, KB and KM, but it does not necessarily need to be two. You can define more, more than two also based upon our organizational hierarchy. This is linked with HR also because in your department, you know, you might have a different, different level of people. Yeah. Okay. That is why it's called partner function or role. Now, so we saw the some configuration. Now, after that, we want to go to sales and distribution. Now we go to sales and distribution. 
then we could do uh, basic function. Okay. Now on uh, SG side also, there is also um, the configuration related to credit management. So there is a configuration in finance. There is some configuration in SD also. So now I'm going to the configuration SD side as well. So we have a sales and distribution, basic function, and here we have a credit management and the risk management because it is a integration between SD and FI. So um, those things are basically divided between the two. So it is divided between the two. So we go to credit management and the risk management. So if we go back here, now this is in SD now. I'm not in FI anymore. So this is some uh, configuration related to SD. So in SD, there is something called item category. So you can activate by item category with which kind of items are credit relevant. Some kind of items may not be uh, credit relevant. I'm selling finished good. I want them to be relevant for credit. If I'm selling some uh, other type of services, I don't want any risk on them. So there is a activate for item category. Then here we have a credit management. So we have a, something called credit group. And uh, so credit group is sales, credit group for sales order for delivery for goods issue. Now, what is the meaning of it? So there are three credit groups. Credit group for sales order, credit group for delivery, and credit group for sales order. So what is the, these uh, three credit group is like a three stages. So do you want to do credit at the time of entering sales order? Do you want to do the credit at the time of delivery of the product? Or do you want to do the credit check at the time of goods issue? Goods issue basically means when the material leaves my warehouse to the customer. At what time I want to perform my credit check? You can do more than one also. But most people in the real world, they will do credit check at the sales order level. So this is the important function. So where we can do this on the basis of credit check. Okay. So, so we can do credit check at the sales order level. This is what most people do. Sometimes people also do at the time of delivery, means uh, sales order and then after that I'm doing delivery, so you can do delivery also. And then uh, we can also do credit check at the time of goods issue as well. So if you want to do at the time of good issue. Okay. Now here, we have a something called assigned sales document and the delivery document. Now here, what is this basically means? Credit limit check for the order types. Order types. Order type basically means there could be different type of orders. Okay. So if you go back here, these are the different order type. We will see that also. So let's say OR is my standard order. So that basically means if I'm doing my standard order, at that time, there is a D. D basically means I'm doing a credit check. So D basically means I'm doing an automatic credit check. Credit group is 01, means at the time of sales order. So is this basically means in the standard order, I am doing a credit, automatic credit check. If I change this order type, let us say I go to different order type, and let us say I go to order type returns. Now this return is not assigned to any credit check. So standard order, if you look at these two line items, 
So a standard order is assigned to a check, but return is not assigned to any check. Now, what is the meaning of it? Meaning of that is like when I'm selling the product to the customer, I'm going to check his credit check. I'm going to check whether his credit limit is exceeded, whether his credit limit is fine, what is the issue, and all that and all that. Okay. So that is how we can do D, which is the credit limit here. Now, at the time of return, I don't want any credit check because when the product coming in to me, when, uh, for example, customer rejected the product, so I'm receiving the material, I'm receiving my rejected item. So when I'm receiving my rejected item, then obviously there is no need for me to do any credit check. So that basically means if you look at it, some orders, there is a credit check, some order, there is no credit check. Repair request. When the product is coming for repair, I don't want to check the repair, uh, the credit. So this basically means sales document type credit limit check, which basically means what kind of a sales documents I wanted to do the credit check, which kind of a document I do not want to do credit check. So we have a choice to do that function. Okay. Credit limit is defined elsewhere. Yes, that is a separate master data. We have not done that yet. This is just a activating whether we particular order we want to do check or not. Credit master data, how do we define it? We have not defined that yet. We're going to do that exercise. We're going to create customer master. And after customer master, we're going to create credit master. We have not done both. We are still in the configuration. Only so far, we are only looking at configuration related to credit master. We look at it, organization configuration. We look some configuration in finance. Now we are looking some configuration which is there in fix. So only so far, so far we are only looking at configuration. Then below that, we have something called defined automatic credit control. So here, we have a defined automatic credit control. Now, this is a very interesting configuration which we have. And this configuration which we have here, this configuration has a lot of uh, impact. So this has a lot of impacts, and this has a lot of impacts on different areas okay so that is what this basically means to me now what is this uh, configuration tells me so we need to understand this configuration very carefully because this configuration has a lot of other impacts in different areas now what is this configuration basically tells us so here we have a credit control area and uh, so if you see that here these are the, the first is the credit control area then there is a risk category and then we have a credit group so there are three parameters which we have here so these are the three parameters for which certain configurations which is being assigned in the system. Now, what does this basically mean? We select, let us say, one of them, and we want to see what is this automatic credit control basically does for us, and what is this basically means for us. So, let us say we select any of these values. So, let's say what does this basically mean? If my credit control area is 1000, if my risk category is 01, 001, 001 basically means low risk, and then I have a risk group, which is the sales order, and then 
I am going into the detail. Now here, for this credit control area, for this risk category, for this credit group, currency euro which is coming from credit control area, we have certain configurations here. Now what is this configuration basically mean? The first and foremost, we have a horizon. You see that here, there is a horizon. Horizon basically means this uh, specify credit horizon for a, you see that a credit horizon for a dynamic credit check. So you can specify month and then system ignores all open orders that are due for delivery beyond this horizon. Now let us say I have a 2M here, you know, so the 2M. So what is the credit horizon basically means? Number of works, number of weeks, you specify the period in the days, weeks and months. So now what is this basically means, I put a two month horizon. So I'm creating a sales order today. And let us say this sales order will be delivered after two months. If this sales order is going to be delivered after two months, then it's too far in the future. So because it's too far in the future, so if it's beyond two months, I can't do a credit check today because even if I'm doing a credit check today, it's not gonna purpose, serve any purpose to me anyways. So I can define the horizon. Then I have a maximum document value. How much the value we can define in the system? So that basically means you might not surpass your credit. This may be your initial order. But if you're giving an initial order, what could be the maximum sales order value? You never purchased before, you never passed the credit, your credit history is perfect. But in current, how much is the document value I can choose? So I can define max document value that in a sales document, you can have this much amount of this much amount of value of an order which we can assign. Second is number of days. Number of days that the next internal review may be overdue. Number of days. When I want to do the next internal review. Then here we have a something called max open percentage, open item percentage. Now max open item percentage basically means that maximum percentage of overdue for open item and customer balance. So I can define, so let me select some other value which has some values filled into it. Let's look at this. So here I have a 50. Okay. Now 50 basically means this is the maximum percentage of overview of the open customer balances. You have not exceeded your limit, but your balance is more than 50% than your limit. You can be stopped. Now, another thing is number of days open item. 
we have another thing called number of days open item so when i'm considering the open item how many days i'm considering so i can say 100 days and then another thing which we see here is days oldest item you have not surpassed your limit but you have an item which is due more than 100 days you have a small amount not a significant amount you have not just do the credit you have not failed your credit check because you have within the limit because many times you might be within the limit but there could be other parameter which might be problem you might have an amount which is overdue last two years he is not but he is not paid me for last two years so that's the problem as well he is not exceeded the limit but his balance is more than 50 percent that is a problem so various other configuration check we can perform we can assign here now we want to set up a customer master so now we want to, to create a customer master record so i want to create a customer master record transaction code for that is xd01 we have to create complete customer so transaction code is xd01 why xd01 because xd01 allows us to create the customer from both perspectives So we want to create xd01 we're going to create a custom master who does fi sdo it is the integral point we both are in, involved so there is some which fi does some which sd does so it's a joint responsibility okay we go back we exit out okay so i want to go to customer transaction code xd01 yesterday we use fd01 so yesterday when we did a customer <clears throat> okay So I wanted to read a customer master record XD01. Yesterday, if you remember, we used FD01. Okay. So this is another point to understand. So there are three transaction code for customer. Yeah. So there is a there is a transaction code for FD01 which is only assigned from finance perspective sometimes it's confusing then we have a vd01 which only assigned from from sales perspective
and then we have x d zero one, which assign the complete customer from finance and sales both. So we create a custom master, but because I want to use XG01. So now we go to XG01, we can type XG01. This is XG01. Now in XG01, you will see that there is a company code and sales area both. Okay. If we type FD01, then you will only see company code, no sales area here. You see that? Only company code, there is no sales area. Then we have a VD01. And then here we have only have a sales area. There is no company code here. Okay. So we have, so that is the difference between the both. So we are going to create XD01. So we go to XD01. When we go to XD01, we select our account group, so to party 001. <clears throat> We select company code 1000, sales organized 1000, distribution channel 1, uh, 10, 0, 0. Okay. So this is the sales organization, distribution channel, and the division you can use for your exercises. Okay. So that is what this basically means. And then we hit enter. This is the create customer. We are creating a complete customer. So I can put the terminology, whatever we want, credit customer, whatever, 12, 13, 20. Then we can put a search term. Then we can put a house number. So, so here we can put uh, route, whatever, house number, postal code, city. country, region. Now this is the same customer. Then we hit enter. We can enter the tax code. Then we can enter the company code data. So this is the company code data. You see that here, general data, sales city data also. And then now we are in company code data, city kind of data. We talked about yesterday, what is the reconciliation account? 
we consider this account is a general ledger in which we do the posting. We can enter credit payment term. We can go to sales area data. Now this is the this is from sales perspective. Now you need to you need to have a customer which you can do from both sides. Otherwise, you cannot do your full exercise. So we have a sales district. We can use sales office. This is all information. Uh, um, <clears throat> Then we can use the sales group. Then we can enter the shipping data. This is just a simple customer we are creating because we need to have a customer to complete the cycle. This is all data which is required from the uh, customer to be available from the customer perspective. Then we have a delivery plant, 1000. You can use the same value. So when you're trading a customer, the plant 1000, you can use plant 1000. So whatever these values which I'm using, you can use those as well. Then we go to billing document. Now here, you can define in quote term, payment term. And now here we have something called credit control area. So you can assign, we saw the credit control area before. Now customer is assigned to credit control area here. So we can assign the credit control area 1000. Okay. Then we have a tax classification. And then we can say so we can save it. If you see here in, in the bottom, see the message customer 102. Look at the message which is there in the bottom 102853 has been created for company code 1000 and sales area 101000. Okay. If I make a note of the customer. We can make a note of that customer. Now, this is the customer we created, and that is the exercise we did. So, we created a customer 102853. Now, I want to do the next step to create. Credit master record. Transaction code is FD32. Credit master record. FD32. And uh, we're going to do this exercise. Okay. I'm back now. And um, so a lot of people they ask this question that credit uh, function, where does it fall? Is it a part of finance? Is it part of sales? Or, or something else. Okay. So in most every company is different, obviously. In uh, in most uh, companies, credit department falls under 
larger finance and accounting department. Now, why that is the case? Because, you know, if salesperson are also setting the credit limit, then is a conflict of the responsibility, you know. So most companies will see that the credit department falls under the finance and accounting. Normally in North America, that is the protocol because customer is handled by the sales, then credit is handled by someone else. If you were both fall into the sale, there is a conflict of interest, there is a conflict of responsibility. So in most companies, because obviously every country, every company is different, but that is how the most country fall into. In Kotam is a freighter, which is used for determining the responsibility of the freight in the sales process. Now we want to go to and we want to create a new question. It you got an answer, right? You were asking that question, where does it fall? Right? So that is the my perception of this answer. But every company is different though. So uh, now we want to create a credit. So we create a customer master. Now we want to create a credit master record. So how do we do that? So for creating credit master record, we go to accounting. We go to financial accounting. Now we go to account receivable. And here we have a credit management. And here we have master data, and that is the transaction code FD32. FD32 is the is a transaction code for creating a credit master data. So make a note of it. Okay. So we go to FD32. This is my customer. I put my credit control area 1000. We select overview, address, company code, status, payment history, etc. Hit enter. So here, this is my customer, credit control area 1000, currency euro. Credit limit we have not assigned, exposure we have not assigned, limit we have not assigned. Okay, we hit enter. This is the address of the customer, this is coming. So this is the customer. This is coming from uh, So this is the address title name sad we hit enter maximum permitted credit limit we can define whatever $1000 $1000 currency 
what is his overall credit limit we can set it up whatever we want here we can assign the credit uh, risk category is high risk low risk medium risk is high risk we talk about credit representative group we can define to any group customer credit group so this fall into the large customers customer group if there is any customer group we can assign then we hit enter then we hit enter and then we hit save central master central data created control data 1000 created so we have created a credit management data for this customer so that is what is going on and that is what we have created in this customer we have created this in this customer central data so we have just created customer um, credit now here there is also display we can check the display there is no payment history no credit exposure credit limit use is 0% because we have not done any transaction so we can always go back in the view credit history we can create a customer master credit master we can view credit master record also which is fd 33 now i want you to create a sale sort of i want to create a sales sort transaction code for trading sales order is ba01 so make a note of it creating a sales order so now we want to create a sales order so here now for that we have to go to sd we go to logistics we go to sales and distribution we go to sales then we go to order and create this is the transaction code vs01 this is the transaction code which allow us to create a sales order make a note of this transaction code this is a new transaction code this is sd transaction code creation of the sales order is done by sales people not finance but we are doing all that so we can see both sides sales side and finance side because both are tightly integrated so we have here va01 which is where logistic sales and distribution sales order create and we hit enter here we can create a sales order initially screen give order type or 101000 so we are creating this for sales order 1000 distribution channel 10 division 00 then we hit enter in the customer we need to enter the same customer which is just created the customer we created today is 102853 so 
So we have a sold to party 102853. We can select any customer, uh, any material, quantity say 100 pieces. We can enter the purchase order number. We can enter the purchase order date. So we are, this is the customer. This is the material. This is the quantity. Then we double click on the line item. Then we reach to the conditions. When we reach to the condition, then here we enter the price. And let us say the price is $250. See the message here. Look at the message. Dynamic credit check has exceeded. Because we put a limit for thousand dollars and this sales order is exceeding that. System gives me information that credit check has exceeded. We hit enter. We go back. Okay. So we saw that message of the credit check. Then we save the order. See the message coming again. System tells me again that this sales order credit check has been exceeded do you want to save it we select on the enter sign continue sign yes so see the message in the bottom sales order 25126 has been saved so although the credit limit for the sales order has exceeded But system allows me to save the sales order. You can also configure not to not to save. You can do that also. If credit check uh, failed, I don't want, I don't want to even take order. People don't do that. People don't reject order. People take order, but don't process any further. So we saw that when we enter the sales order. For this customer, system gives me message that credit limit has exceeded. So credit limit passed, and in the passing of the credit limit, we got this Okay. So we created a sales order. We make a note of the sales order. This is the sales order. Create a sales order. And we verified. Verified that <clears throat> verified that sales order failed credit. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Now what? I try to create delivery. Now see the message here. Now the next thing which I'm trying to do, try create outbound delivery for failed sales order. Transaction code is wheel01n. Make a note of that. So wheel01. VS1 is a sales order transaction. Make a note of Hello. So make a note of that. So now where is this delivery? So we go back. So here below the sales. We have a shipping in now transportation, R1 delivery, create single document with reference VL01N. This is the menu path. I put my order number, I put my date, I put my shipping point, I hit enter. See the message. Order block for delivery as a result of credit check. It's a red message, it's error message. It's an error message. Now this error message tells me that we cannot deliver this product because this order has failed for the credit check. Okay, now how do we release this order from credit check? So we want to go back and then release sales order from credit check. Now, if I go back here, Then uh, go to finance. Then we have a sales and distribution. And then we have a transaction co. <clears throat> so we have a now the one very interesting thing is if we see this uh, vkm3 this is the transaction code which will allow the same thing you have in finance and if you go to sd then if you go to creative manager then here also in sd also we have the same thing so you can also do fd32 here also so it's kind of repeated in both sides. Sales and distribution. We again repeat it. So it, it is repeat on both sides. Okay. 
same thing same configuration on both sides. same uh, transaction on sd also same in the finance also so we go here you see that vk m3 you go to vk m3 i put my sales order number i hit execute so this transaction is in finance also sd also they kind of repeat in both sides Then we have a credit control area, document 25126. We have sales organization, distribution channel, division, credit account. And then this is the name of it. This is the city of it. And this is the whole address. And if you see here, there is a sign button. There is a release button. You see this release button. You can also reject it. Or you can assign it, release it. Release basically means I'm approving it. And then we save it. See the message. Document 25126. Sales order is released. So we went to transaction code VKM3 to release the sales order. And sales document has been released, has been approved. You can also reject notes. After releasing, if I go to SD, if I go to shipping trans uh, tra uh, transportation, if you go to VL01N, you can And then we hit enter. Now delivery is allowed. Now system, you you're you're open for delivery. We block it. After blocking, we create um, outbound delivery. Create outbound delivery. And uh, here, delivery was failed. So here, delivery was failed. Now, after approval, delivery is successful. So that is, we can Now, let us say I create a return order. Transaction code VA01, doc type RE. <clears throat> I want to create a return order. Okay. I exit out from here. Do 
we go back to the sales set again we enter the order type re re is for return we enter the same customer is a return order customer is returning material got damaged in transit material quantity 10 pieces customer is returning go back and we shift now you see the return order has been saved for the same customer for everything same but there is no credit check but there is no credit problem no credit check no credit problem system does not throw any error message for us system does not throw any error message for us at all we created a because return not subject to any credit check and no credit check was performed system doesn't perform any credit check at all now if you go back we go back to the finance now here we also have a lot of other data you see the credit management info record there is a lot of reports here which is uh, f-32 for example i put my customer secret control area i hit execute it gives you all the determination this is my customer this is my credit control area this is my customer number this category this credit limit is this exposure is this limit of exposure is this so you can check all the different uh, things related to that customer you want to these are different other details this is the customer date all that information so that is what this payment history there is no payment history because this customer has not paid us anything because the customer i want to go to customer information i can go to custom line item because there is no payment so we can do all these and there are a lot of other data a lot of other transactions you can go through this is account if there's any balance you can check that this is the same fd 10 n which we saw yesterday okay so this is what so last thing which you did was credit reporting which you can do in standard sap and um, I have a good news. The class is over. News is over. And reminder for homework. Reminder for homework. Class is over for today. And uh, Talk to you next week. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you all. What document trigger is this document? What are no, there are different selection criteria. VKM and all that, there are different selection criteria. Okay, thank you, guys. Any questions anybody has before we say goodbye? 
Anybody, any question? There are different parameters, there are different selection criteria. Here we have different reports with the different parameters. Okay. I need assistance with my SAP installation and SAP VPN. Okay. So Mohit, um, I will ask him uh, to. Um, yeah. So Mohit will do tomorrow then. Okay. So any other question anybody has before we say goodbye to each other? So there are different reports uh, um, which is giving different uh, selection parameters. Okay. Anyone else? When we will configure full company? Sir, that is coming. Wait. We still have a lot of ports left. We are in the first video. We have one more video to go. Delhi Bahadur hai Alam Sahib. Okay. Any one any other question, concerns? I know. We we are still in the first video. We have one more video to go. We have a lot of stuff to cover. Okay. So no question. Thank you very much. Talk to you next week. Keep doing exercises. Practice, make men perfect. Practice, practice, practice. Read, read, read. Thank you. Bye, guys.